a satellite's image taken all the way back in May 2024 that was published early this year showed something very interesting and for some people long anticipated in a naval shipyard in the Chinese city of Dalian. This is in China's Liaoning province. The shipyard in question, the Dalian shipyard, was where China's first aircraft carrier was completed after its unfinished hull was purchased and arrived from Ukraine. In the satellite's photo, we saw what is clearly a module forming part of a new ship. This module clearly contained two long trenches. Analysts believe that these two trenches are consistent with the tracks of catapults for an aircraft carrier. More precisely, the shape and the arrangements of these two tracks are consistent with what we refer to as the waist catapults on the port side of a carrier. In addition to these, if we take US carriers as benchmarks, there should be two more catapults on the starboard side, the side where the carrier island is located. The starboard catapults are known as the bow catapults due to their forward position on the carrier deck. China's Type 003 carrier, the Fujian, already possesses two bow catapults in addition to a single waist catapult. So it's pretty likely that these two bow catapults would be retained for the next aircraft carrier, making a total of four catapults for the new carrier. This module cited all the way back in May 2024 is the first concrete indication that China was indeed constructing its fourth aircraft carrier, often labeled the Type 004. More recently, since June 2025, a large vessel has been under construction at the Dalian shipyard. Initially, this wasn't all that newsworthy. The Dalian shipyard produces both military ships and commercial ships, and odds were that this was just another large cargo ship under construction. However, as time went on, the perceived probability that this is something far more than another cargo ship rose significantly. Modules for the ship had been sitting in the dry dock for a long time, which wouldn't have been economical for a commercial vessel. The construction process, the shape of the hull, and the modules used began to mirror more and more that of an aircraft carrier under construction. As a result, more and more observers began to believe that this was the long-fabled Type 004 supercarrier. In mid-November, latest photos of the Dalian shipyard taken by passengers on board planes overflying the shipyard showed a dramatic yet long-anticipated development. The latest image shows the major segments of the next carrier beginning to take shape. A clearly visible component is a large box-like enclosure embedded deep within the ship structure. Analysts widely assessed this box-like enclosure to be a reactor containment section. If true, this is a signature structural element found on nuclear carriers. Its proportions and positioning strongly resemble similar components on the U.S. Navy's Nimitz-class and Ford-class supercarriers, where the nuclear reactors and their protective shielding are housed. This doesn't mean that China necessarily copied from American carriers, but more that optimal location and the shape of the reactor containment section are the same, no matter whether you are in China or the US. Physics work the same and all that. While absolute confirmation remains impossible from imagery alone, the resemblance is striking enough that most observers now believe that the Dalian shipyard is preparing the new vessel for nuclear power. The latest photographic evidence offers the strongest confirmation so far that China is indeed building its fourth aircraft carrier, the Type 004. And not only that, the new carrier will have nuclear propulsion. This would mark a major milestone in China's naval development, 
and moved the PLA Navy closer to technological parity with the US Navy in terms of naval aviation technology. These indications come only a week or so after China officially commissioned the Fujian, its first carrier equipped with aircraft catapults, albeit conventionally powered. This may not be the last conventionally powered carrier China will build, but we'll get into that later. Before we got to this point, a range of soft indicators have pointed to nuclear propulsion for the Type 004 carrier. This included the satellite imagery showing that China had constructed a land-based prototype reactor intended for a large surface warship. This was built somewhere in the mountainous regions of southwestern China, in a location ideal for secrecy and testing nuclear systems away from populated areas. While the Pentagon's most recent annual report on Chinese military power stopped short of explicitly naming a nuclear-powered carrier, it does emphasize that China's next generation of carriers will have greater endurance. This phrasing can be interpreted as a hint toward nuclear propulsion, as nuclear power allows a carrier to operate for years without refueling, dramatically extending its operational range, power availability, and presence. The adoption of nuclear propulsion would dramatically enhance the Type 004's capabilities. Nuclear carriers can travel virtually unlimited distances without refueling, allowing China to sustain far-flung naval operations much more effectively. Nuclear reactors also produce enormous electrical power, which is essential for modern carrier systems, radar arrays, advanced sensors, electronic warfare suites, and especially the aircraft catapult launch systems. In addition, a nuclear-powered carrier would elevate China into a very exclusive club. Only the United States and France currently operate such vessels. The Type 004 is expected to be a substantially bigger ship than even the Fujian, and much bigger than China's two ski jump carriers. Unofficial artwork connected with the Type 004 have shown a ship broadly similar to the US Navy's Ford class supercarriers. These similarities range from dimensions to the layout of the island superstructure, aircraft elevators, and catapult systems. China has a land based carrier mock up in the city of Wuhan, which tends to be renovated based on its current carrier project. The Wuhan carrier mock-up had been recently reconstructed with major changes from the previous version that resembled the Fujian. The new mock-up is larger and closer in dimension to the Gerald Ford. The structure also saw its island moved much further down the back, again similar to the island location on the Ford class. So, what we are witnessing could be the rise of a Sino Ford supercarrier in the Type 004. Nuclear power and greater size will enable the Type 004 to have one additional catapult than the Fujian, which carries only three. More catapults translates directly into higher aircraft sortie rates, a major factor in combat effectiveness. Like the Fujian, the Type 004 is assumed to use an electromagnetic catapult, a launch system for aircraft similar to that on the US Navy's Ford class supercarriers. Compared to the previous generation of steam catapults on the Nimitz class, the electromagnetic catapults reduce the wear and tear associated with aircraft launches and can launch a wider range of aircraft across a wider range of weight classes. The use of electromagnetic catapults means that China's newest carriers have basically skipped a whole generation of catapults, 
although it remains to be seen to what extent their carrier force will have to deal with teething issues, like what the US Navy's Ford class has found out the hard way. Interestingly, the information circulating on the Chinese internet suggests that China may also be building a separate, conventionally powered carrier. And this is immediately after the PLA Navy has just commissioned the Type 003 Fujian, an ultimate conventional carrier. Rumors point to the Jianan shipyard in Shanghai, the facility that's built the Fujian as the likely construction site. This ship might represent an improved version of the Type 003 Fujian. Some long-term observers of the Chinese Navy have informally referred to this rumored conventional carrier as the Type 003A. The addition of a letter onto the name of a PLAN ship class designation is usually to denote an improved variant of the same class. Compared with a nuclear carrier, another conventional carrier, like the purported 003A, would be advantageous in many ways. It would be cheaper and faster to build. It would be based on an existing Type 003 design that has been proven and tested, can be produced in greater numbers, and still offer strong naval aviation capability in regional theaters. This dual-track development strategy would mirror, in some ways, the U.S. Navy's earlier history of operating both nuclear-powered and conventionally-powered aircraft carriers simultaneously. For example, America had operated the non-nuclear Kitty Hawk class, alongside the nuclear-powered Nimitz class for well over three decades. While nuclear carriers offer unmatched endurance, China's most likely near-term priorities, such as enforcing claims in the South China Sea and deterring a U.S. intervention in the Western Pacific, do not necessarily require nuclear propulsion. Conventional carriers can operate effectively within China's regional sphere and can be fielded in greater numbers for the same budget. However, a non-nuclear carrier like another Type 003 or 003A would of course be far less suited for power projection across long distances in a blue water context. They would require far more supply ships and replenishment oilers compared to a nuclear carrier like the upcoming Type 004. China's work on a likely nuclear-powered carrier in the form of the Type 004, combined with the possible construction of another large conventional carrier, demonstrates how rapidly its naval ambitions are expanding. And not just expanding, but its ambitions are in fact being realized. The PLAN is clearly aiming for a blue water force with substantial naval air power and power projection capabilities. Of course, currently, China's three operational carriers, even with the addition of two more carriers, remain outnumbered by the US Navy's 11 super carriers. But recent developments over the last few years clearly shows that China has the shipbuilding and industrial capacity to match the current number of carriers fielded by the U.S. Whether China will deem that as a worthwhile objective and the potential response by the U.S. are another story.